welcome to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Sandra Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is David Selberg, and David is Chief Executive Officer of Hospice of Santa Barbara. Welcome, David. Thank you, Cinder. Thank you for having me. Oh, gosh. Your work is so important and so inspiring. I'm so glad you're here today to share that with us. Yeah. So why don't you just sort of, you know, bring us up to speed or touch on something that you think is especially wonderful these days? Absolutely. Thank you, Cinder. You know, when most people think about the word hospice, mm -hmm. they think the final days the dying process, mm -hmm. they think medical devices, and really end, end, end of life. Right. And Hospice of Santa Barbara isn't that. Ah. Um, we're a very special organization. We're approaching next, next year, our 50th year, wow. in the community. And Hospice of Santa Barbara is truly a gift to our community. Yes. We um, are somewhat of a psychosocial program mm. in the community. We help anyone going through terminal or life-threatening illness, and we help those that are grieving the loss of a loved one. Okay. So those are our primary focuses with our organization. So the patient, because of course there's grief involved there. Right. And then with anyone else who either has lost someone or who is going through that dying process with their, their family member or loved one. Exactly. That's, those are our primary service programs, and we've been doing them, as I said, for almost 50 years. Almost 50 years. Yes. Yeah. Gosh. And so do you think that very many other communities have something like this? We're sort of rare. Most hospice organizations, and the word hospice I frequently am asked, are you part of a, a chapter or a network across the country? No, each hospice organization is unique and freestanding. And most have nurses on staff, doctors mm -hmm. on staff, a medicalized model of hospice. And we're really from the old beginning model of hospice that came from England oh. to the United States really? long, long ago in the early 1970s. And so it's, we help people stay in their homes mm -hmm. and get support in their homes. Most Americans want to, when they get to the end stages of life, they want to die in their homes. Most Americans don't. They die in facilities or hospitals. So Hospice of Santa Barbara really helps that individual and their families with all the supportive services to help that person remain in their home if that's their desire. We also have amazing medical hospice organizations mm -hmm. in our community like VNA Health, uh -huh. among others, that do amazing hospice work, uh, medical hospice medical, work. Medical, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so in other communities then, I mean, I have the impression that there are some hospice organizations that are for profit and others that are non profit. And That's in our right. community, both are non profit. Both yeah. VNA and Hospice of Santa Barbara are non profit. Is that right? That's right. And there's other good hospice programs in the community like assisted home hospice, Central Coast Hospice, oh. for profit hospice programs. Oh, I see. Yeah. At Hospice of Santa Barbara, um, we're 100% donor driven. So I've got no insurance billing department. Oh. We don't. Uh, do Medicare, Medi-Cal, we don't bill private insurance, as I just said. We're 100% donor driven, so we can help that individual and their family through critical illness or terminal illness for as long as necessary. Wow. Yes, it's, it's a very special program we have. Yeah. So you really depend on financial donations. We do. They're key. And our community is so generous. Yes. And, and, you know, it's humbling, and we're so grateful to have that kind of support at Hospice of Santa Barbara. We have about 45 staff. Um, a good many of them are psych psychologists, psychotherapists, marriage family therapists, and they help kids um, as young as three, four years of age who are dealing with um, loss, grief, death. Um, we have, we're in all the high schools and oh. junior high schools with our counselors on a weekly basis, providing one-on-one -on -one and group support to teenagers and children. 
where um, someone in their family is either dying or they're grieving the loss of a loved one. Oh. And we serve all the way up to seniors, you know, that are 100 plus. So um, our counseling program is extremely robust wow. and we serve so many folks in the community. That's really our beginning, uh, beginning uh, anchor program that we started um, those many decades ago was our counseling service. And it's interesting, it started in England. Yes, it did. Yeah, it started in England and it was brought to the east coast of the United States. Oh. An amazing woman that lived in Santa Barbara, Alice Heath, oh. um, she saw something about hospice back east and she brought Elizabeth Kubler Ross mm. to Santa Barbara. Wow. Um, and that's where the whole movement started in the early 1970s. Gosh. So you folks have been doing this good work for almost 50 years. Absolutely. I stand on the shoulders of some amazing people in our community, um, like Charlie Zimmer, among many others, that have really developed yeah. our organization. So the work that you do in the schools uh, with children that are um, grieving, what do they get referred by the teachers, or how do you find exactly. out about Exactly. We have good relationships with all the school counselors, oh, okay. um, with the school administrators. So when a, when a teenager or a child is, is struggling in school, um, we're brought in uh, to the environment and we serve them. We work with them one-on-one -on -one or in group support, um, where we'll have a group of teens doing it, you know, during lunch hour in a confidential space. Mm -hmm. We'll have a support group. That's really important. And also, when tragedies happen on school campuses, oh, yes. very sadly, we're brought into those environments as well. Um, so if there's a tragic death or loss, um, my counselors are there. So do you focus mostly on Santa Barbara proper or Santa Barbara County? South Santa Barbara County. Okay, okay. Yeah, we're in schools from Carpinteria, Santa Barbara to Goleta, and we're also in Santa Inez oh. um, at their high school well, that's good. campus and other environments up in the central county. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And so do you folks use um, volunteers for anything? We do. Our other big program, uh, besides our counseling <laughs> services, is our patient care services program. And as I shared, um, our team of social workers and care managers work with that person going through terminal or life-threatening. You don't have to be terminal mm -hmm. to access our program. And so in our patient care services program, we uh, have a, over 117 trained volunteers. Wow. So our volunteers will help our patients go to a doctor's appointment. Oh. They'll deliver groceries if it's a low-income household. Um, they'll go to the doctor's appointment and take notes. Oftentimes, when any of us are in that kind of an, yeah. an appointment or medical environment, we have all the questions that we seem to forget when we're actually sitting yeah. with the physician. Right, right. So um, we have so much support with the medical community, whether it be Ridley Tree Cancer Center, Cottage Health, mm -hmm. Sansom, um, uh, Public Health, all the, all the different doctors and clinics yeah. in town. So lots of collaboration. Lots of collaboration. We couldn't do it alone. So Hospice of Santa Barbara really collaborates um, amongst all the nonprofits, from Teddy Bear Cancer oh, mm -hmm. Foundation uh, to all the food programs. The pandemic really, really highlighted the need of families struggling with end of life yeah. um, and their basic needs being met. Yeah. And so we've really stepped up as an organization and been able to support them with food and tra taxi vouchers, Uber vouchers, Gosh. all that sort of thing. Yeah. So whatever they might need. Yeah, and sadly, we, we also have helped folks with and their families that are patients with you know cremation costs, that oh. kind of thing. Oh, I see. Yeah. All right, so um, a person listening to this, let's just say they, um, they wanna get more involved, they wanna make a financial donation, some, they want to find out something. They can go to your website, which I know is on the bottom of the screen. Yes. And they can find out how to be a volunteer. What kinds of volunteer services you would want them to do. They can mm -hmm. find out about uh, how to make a financial donation. I bet yes. you have a Donate Now button. We do. It's yeah. very easy to access <laughs> on our homepage. 
And they can yeah. find out about all of your programs and how they might fit in in one way or another. Exactly. Wait for a friend. Or yeah, we always need volunteers in our program. So just reach out to us through our website or call our, our phone number that I think you're sharing uh -huh. on the screen as well. Yeah, yeah. And so I know, like, you know, just to touch on your counseling program, mm -hmm. I, I know that there's a, w a waiting list, um, mm -hmm. which, you know, I'm sure can be, you know, a little frustrating to people who are in the middle of grieving. But um, I think you encourage people to put their name on the waiting list because, you know, it'll come up sooner than they think. Absolutely. You're completely right, Cinder. So sometimes when they call, they're, told, they're informed, you're going to have to wait a bit. And even with private pay therapists oh, yes. or other counts, paid counseling programs, ours is freely offered. Um, there's a wait. It, it might take you two, three weeks to get in to see the therapist yeah. in those private pay counseling programs or individual therapists. So if you hear, if you call in and you hear that we have a, a, a wait list, please just leave your name, get That's on good. the list. Don't be discouraged because you could move fairly, uh, fairly quickly through the list um, as soon as we have an opening. That's so don't very, be discouraged. Very good advice. It's amazing. You can provide all of this service for free. Isn't it? At, it just with donations. It's You're absolutely right. It's truly a gift of Santa Barbara. Yes. And long before I ever worked at hospice, I knew of hospice and the amazing work they have done in the community all these years. And I worked at other nonprofits and referred our clients and patients to Hospice of Santa Barbara. It's really a gift for our community. Yes, yes. We are so fortunate to have We you. are. So um, what other programs? I, I'm thinking of that teddy bear. You may, I don't know if you do it anymore, but there's we other do. programs that you, that you do that maybe you'd like to touch on. Absolutely. A couple that I'd love to share with you. You uh, just touched on one of them is our Beloved Bears program. Oh, that's right. Uh, Beloved program. Bear. Okay. And it's such a touching uh, program. It was started by some amazing volunteers. Um, and basically, um, when someone dies in our program, the person has to be a patient in our program, um, sometimes it doesn't have to be for a child, but the family will donate articles of clothing. And we have a team of volunteers who make teddy bears with the clothing of the loved one who has passed. Oh, how sweet. And so oftentimes, you know, a child who misses their grandmother or has lost a parent or a sibling, they'll receive a teddy bear. Um, we don't wash or sanitize yeah. <laughs> the, 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 you know, grandma's favorite apron or granddad's favorite uh, shirt. Um, so these volunteers make these teddy bears. Wonderful program. Gosh, and it? I've seen them. They're yeah. Just, they're really Yeah, they're sweet. good size teddy bears. And another thing that Hospice of Santa Barbara has been really focused on in recent years is advanced care planning. Oh, oh yes. And, okay. you know, um, oftentimes when any of us enter a medical or hospice environment, uh, a, a hospital environment, um, it, the system will make decisions for us, mm -hmm. um, the healthcare system. So what advanced care documents do is put us in the driver's seat. So if we have a grandparent or someone with significant long-term illness, that person might wish to make their wishes clear. Mm -hmm. In our community, and it's a document called the MyCare uh -huh. document, uh -huh. it's respected throughout the country, throughout the United States, and um, in various medical hospitals throughout the country. And so it's, what we've been doing is creating workshops and encouraging our community to complete the My Care document, the advanced care document. And um, when they complete that, it really states their intentions. So that if it's, a, it's a, a grandmother in the ICU and she doesn't want feeding tubes or ventilator or any of those uh, full code medical yeah. interventions, um, which can really disrupt end of life, yeah. Um, this document is respected by our local hospital and hospitals throughout the country. Um, and it can be a much more peaceful end of life journey for comfort and care yeah. for that person. So all anyone has to do is go to our website 
Um, and right on the home page, it's get it done. Um, get it done. Is get the it name done. Okay. And just click into that link, or you can just do get it done SB. Um, just Google that. Um, in Spanish, it's mi regalo, R E G A L O, mi regalo. Uh -huh. We have it in Spanish as well. And you just click on it. They can download the document, the MyCare document. Uh -huh. We schedule workshops with community members, That's really with organizations, good. and they'll bring folks in and yeah. we'll do a workshop so that people can get it done, can get their document completed. Let's say there's somebody who, um, I mean, they're not sick, they're not in the hospital, they're, they're not like nearing death or anything like that. Um, but, you know, you might say to them, well, it's still a good idea for all adults to put this thing together because you just never know. It's true. Yeah, yeah you're absolutely right. I mean, for example, I filled one out and yeah. I'm in good health, yeah. you know, and, and knock on wood. And um, so, you know, I kind of put it, I put in the document those things I'd like to have done if, if I'm suddenly incapacitated and mm -hmm. traveling somewhere or, or local. Um, yeah, it makes my intentions clear. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it's a support to my loved ones as yes, well. Yes, it is. Because yes. it can really cause a lot of strife, sometimes conflict with families if they don't know what to do, what the wishes of the person would be if they're not able to speak for themselves in that yeah. medical hospice envi hospital environment. Yeah. And I've heard people say, um, make out the form, of course, do that, mm -hmm. and make sure that you discuss it with your loved ones so that nobody is surprised or blind. Exactly. Or Let people know in your yeah. world that you actually have the document. That you have the document, yes. yes. And we help people. We get it scanned, mm -hmm. um, and we send it off to Cottage Hospital. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Um, but also keep a copy. People sometimes travel with it if they've got mm, um, that's a good you know, idea. some medical issue that kind is, of thing. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Yeah. So um, I bet you've got a story or two you might want to share with us. Yes, you know, um, hospice, we are such a special organization. And one of our uh, counseling clients, um, she was married for 66 years mm. to her husband. And um, she had a neurodegenerative illness. Uh. And um, she was in our patient care services program. And she had a very peaceful passing at home. Um, our care management program helped her. We brought in medical hospice services mm. as the as she got closer to end of life. Okay. And then when she died, and it was it, it, her family saw it coming. Her husband of all those years was able to come into our organization and receive some bereavement services oh, that to help great. him because the last time he had been single and without her, he was a young man. Yeah. So. We were able to work with him one-on-one -on -one and bring him into a support group, which we call widow widower support mm. groups, um, so that That's he could good. meet with other folks in a supportive environment who were going through similar loss. So that's one story yeah, that's that kind of shares one. the kind of work we do at hospice. Gosh, so, so important, so amazing. Yes. So we have about a minute or so left. Is there anything else you'd like our viewers to know about Hospice of Santa Barbara? Yeah, that this really is a community treasure. Yes. We, our program belongs to this community. It's 100% donor, donor yes. driven. That's um, what's so amazing and so important is. for people to know. Yeah, so please go to our website. We do a lot of community education. Uh, we have an Illuminate Speaker Series oh, yes. that we highlight prominent speakers mm -hmm. um, across, that are known nationally and internationally. And it's a Zoom platform. And so we really talk and discuss not just the terminal end of life topic, uh -huh. but just the bigger topics of the meaning of life and death and, and all sorts of backgrounds and, and that sort of that thing. So go to our website and learn yeah. about Hospice of Santa Barbara. And thanks for sharing it yeah, that here is too. Yeah, that's fascinating. Well, the other thing I know that you have is you have a whole storeroom of pamphlets. Yes. That, on, on all kinds of topics. And even if a person just wants to come in there and 
and get a pamphlet or two or three and share them with their family. That's exactly. The, yeah. And oftentimes people will call us and they're like not ready for therapy or counseling yeah, uh -huh. or support groups. They just want some brochures, yes. some tools, basic tools right. to sort of normalize and not feel so alone with yeah. what they're going through. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, David, you folks do such important work. We're so lucky to have you. Thank you, Cinder. Yeah, yeah. you said it well, a treasure in our community. Yeah, it truly is a community treasure Yeah. for yeah. so long. Yeah. So thank you for being here and sharing your story. Thank you. Thank you, Cinder. Yeah. And thanks to all your viewers for, for, uh, for being interested. Yeah. And thank you for joining us on 805 Focus, and we'll see you next time.